Welcome to the Laurent Collective Podcast, where we go deeper than just surface talk. Each week, we'll explore everything from family, business, creativity, culture, and faith. To make sure not to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and hop on to Instagram at Laurent Collective to chat with us about this episode. Hello. Hi there. We are back and we, um, yeah, the sun is shining today as we record this. And so that is very nice. The weather is finally taking a turn for the goodness. Yeah, the goodness. The goodness. (laughs) We would have our windows open typically, but we've closed them so you don't hear every car that drives by and every plane that goes over, which is pretty much every few minutes. Constant. So Uh, it's it's constant to the fact that we don't really notice it anymore because it's the planes, especially so much. So yeah. Speaking of planes, which is nice to be honest. Look at me do a little segue here. Are you proud of this? Speaking of planes, do you see what I'm going to (laughs) do? Very Um, well done. Speaking of planes. Typically, you would get on a plane to go someplace for a vacation, or as they call it here, a holiday. So we will use those two words. I'm sure we'll go back and forth because we use both of yeah. them. We tend to use holiday more because people still, I mean, they know what vacation means, but everyone else uses the word I think we've just acclimated here. to the word holiday, yeah. So I know for those of you listening to the you're probably like, oh my gosh, you sound so weird saying holiday. Like, But they would, that's, that's what everyone says here. So yeah, we're not trying okay. to be weird. Yeah. Um, But uh, because of that, thinking of that, typically you go on a plane or maybe you drive someplace for a vacation or that kind of thing. But our family has done a lot of staycations where we stay at our house, but we do things in the area. We haven't just, I know I'm saying that we live in London. That's maybe an easier thing to do here. But we did this when we were in the States and we lived in the suburbs as well. So often when we post like photos and stuff like that um, or, you know, whatever about us being, you know, doing a staycation and that kind of thing, we get some questions about it and like, how do we do that? And so we thought we'd chat about that. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. I know summer's coming up for a lot of people. Or almost pretty much here. Yeah. In the States, I think it's almost there. We've got some of our kids are in school till mid July. So we've got some time, but we also have another break coming up as well. School break at the end of the month. Um, so, um, yeah, we thought we'd just chat about Mm -hmm. how we kind of have found, we've tested a lot of stuff out, um, and what we have found to work well for our family. Yeah. And I was thinking too, like, you know, the reasons why we would do a staycation versus maybe like, yeah, going on a holiday or whatever. I guess we need to think of a different word than staycation if if we refer to it as a holiday. Stay holiday? That sounds weird. Stay holiday? Stay holiday? I don't know. (laughs) You're inventing a new word. Yeah. Maybe there's Um, a word for it. But I think a lot of times, like, we, you know, you know, uh, uh, me for sure, like, I always look at other people and they're like, oh, they're going here or they're going there. But, like, you know, a lot of times we kind of find ourselves in a season where either we're trying to save money or we're trying to pay some debt off or um or we just you know just want to stick around like we just want to relax we don't want to feel like we have to go somewhere and like do all the things and stuff like that and so i think there's there's multiple reasons why you would stay um around your home or in your home for a break in a sense um yes i i would say one one thing we did when we were in debt and we kept acquiring debt Mm, is we were like ooh this, you know, time is coming up, we should go someplace, let's put it on a credit card, and things like that. Mm. And, um, you know, everyone makes their own decisions on that and things like that. But for us, it is if we don't have the money saved to be able to pay for it in cash, then we're not going. Yeah, Um, I mean, it's just because we built some unhealthy rhythms with credit cards and things like that in our past. So like, that's why we've made the decision not to like, there might be people that people, have yeah, healthy yeah. rhythms with it. Like, yes, exactly. And great, like, but awesome. a lot, but for, I just, would say, the we ma- just haven't been yeah, able to I would that. say the majority of people though, like if you don't, I would say if you don't have the money to go on a vacation, don't go on a vacation. Um, I feel like that's just, you know, um, because that quickly becomes then the next vacation, you still don't have the money to go on it and you go on it or that kind of yeah. thing, or you find, Maybe you only have a certain amount of money and the place you want to go is more expensive. You know, do it in a unique way, find a different way, that kind of thing. Um, Just, I guess, maybe, like, don't get caught up in the comparison game. For sure. And if there's one thing, you know, um, it's funny because 
spring break is such a thing in the States. Mm-hmm. Um, here we just call it Easter break. And yes, people definitely people go places mm-hmm. and stuff like that for sure. Typically, it's about a two week break. It, here, yeah, it's about a so. two week break here. But uh, even I was watching this YouTuber that was um, that talks about the differences between the UK and, and the US and stuff. And he was talking about the idea of spring break. And that um, when he was in school here in university, he there was a bunch of people studying abroad from the U.S. And they're like, it's spring break. We're going to this country and this country and this country. And they're like, what are you doing? And he's like, um, I'm going to go home to my parents' house. But the thing that the U.S. students that were exchange students didn't realize is like how many breaks there actually are. Yeah. And so even in university here, there's more breaks than what you get in university in the United States. So like spring break is such a thing. But that spring break thing is such a thing when it comes to like kids breaks and all that mm-hmm. stuff like that like there's this i mean you can just see it when you look on social media mm-hmm. everyone's at disney world everyone's at the beach like well, I all think those besides, kinds of things besides like well christmas or the winter winter break like that's besides break, that like yeah. that's the main break mm-hmm. i think in at least in, in the, the u.s States, from yeah. what we experienced yeah so um but like here it we have like it's like a constant uh, well, it's not, constant, it's not constant, but there's a lot more breaks in there that you have opportunities. To, For like, those of you listening to the states that may be familiar with like year round school, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's more it's of that like format that. where you yeah, have yeah. more breaks. You go, they go for longer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I think the first thing we would say is like, don't feel that pressure, and we feel it sometimes too. Like living here, like well, your holidays oh, are gosh. important. Your holiday time yeah. is so important. So often it's like well where are you going to go for the break where are you going for it and a lot of our friends they have family that live in different countries and stuff Mm. so they're going back to their home countries to visit and and when you're in europe i mean right now there are tickets now this is for a very cheap airline that (laughs) anything you add will cost you sometimes it's scary to fly on that it's not well it's not scary but (laughs) but you're like oh i think i paid for everything i like that bag's just an inch too big you need to pay 50 more pounds or something like that but there is an airline that i even saw today that literally has tickets for five five six pounds what for six pounds to get to italy right now now it's all you're allowed to have is a small bag that fits underneath your like a purse basically yeah but still Um, and then they'll charge you more for extra but that's the starting price so that shows you um you know if you want to fly cheaply in europe you can fly cheap in Europe. I don't even the cheap flights in the States. I don't ever. I mean, what would that be in the States? That's like seven dollars or something like that. Seven. No. Oh, yes. like that's how yeah, much it would be. Rate, Probably I around know, somewhere seven around or eight there. dollars. Yeah. Um, I don't ever remember being able to find a flight for that, even to Chicago, and that's three hours away from Indianapolis, kind of thing. So, it can be fairly cheap to to travel in Europe and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But when we say, oh, we're just staying here, people are like, what do you do? I mean, different mm-hmm. our friends here are like, what do you do when you stay here? How do you keep your kids busy and that kind of thing? And so that's what we thought we'd talk about and really kind of go into a little bit more of what are some things that we do. And we'll give you examples of here in London, but I want to also make sure we give examples of what we did when we were in the States. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because if you live in a city, clearly there's going to be more things to do mm-hmm. um, with your kids um, as a staycation, but you can be super creative in wherever you live and that be the case. So yeah. Um, the first thing that we do is for Pat and I, is we take off work, that sounds obvious, but I want to make sure we say that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, especially in kind of how the world is right now, where a lot of the work is being done at home now. Um, and a lot of people are working home. I mean, I know you can work anywhere. Yeah. You can work from anywhere. And I think it's just, um, you know, it's really key for us to, to really kind of shut everything down and to, to not feel the pressure of, um, stepping stepping into it like you know oh oh well I'll just take a couple hours here or do that like no like actually take the break like really schedule it out actually mm-hmm. and like treat it like you're not going to be around you know and, and there are some simple things that you can do which I'm saying this to myself because I'm not always good at this either but again because we are home sometimes like oh I'll just check my email really quick and then you get pulled in and then you're in that and our kids often will catch us doing that I thought you weren't working I'm like I'm not uh but I kind of am and that kind of thing and so put even on your like whatever email you have put a notice that like I'm out until this date like Mm -hmm. In the States, I remember um, that kind of feeling of like, well, I can reach people whenever, even when they're on holiday, because they're going to check their messages. Well, like here, Mm -hmm. it's just standard. The amount of times that I get back and someone says, I'm out. And sometimes they're out for three Mm -hmm. weeks. I'll respond. If it's an emergency, you can reach this person. And like, that's Mm -hmm. just normal. And it might, I mean, again, people in the States might have like that 
healthy rhythm though too to be able to do it's that not so uncommon. it's common yeah yeah you know, true but some people I think do. from from our experience what we've learned here yeah you know and probably the industries that we were in you kind of had to be maybe available on, to some and extent. And that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just in case. So, so put that on your email. Take your email off your phone while you're on holiday because, I mean, it's so tempting when you see the little thing, the mail thing, and it shows you, like, how many emails you have to read. First of all, you feel a little overwhelmed, like, maybe I should go in there and check those and, like, yeah. that kind of thing and leave it. Just take it. You can, I think you can pause it on coming through and that kind of thing. Um, if you need to, if social media is part of your job and if you go on there, it pulls you into work or pulls you into, like, comparing mm. um, your work or what other people are doing at that time shut off social media Take for a off. couple of weeks like fine if you want to show people that you're on holiday and stuff like that um, document it and you can post it when you get back um, and that kind of thing like that is okay you don't have to do it in the moment and that type of thing so those are a couple of things of anything that you like look around your house what pulls you typically into work you know mm. especially if you have like you know hybrid shove it in the closet from home <laughs> shove it in the closet yeah i don't think we even have space to do that but unplug your computers yeah. like do whatever you need to do whatever you need to do and like yeah. for us like often like on a holiday or something like that i i'm working on like putting together family albums from all the years that i haven't done it and so like, so i will be on my computer sometimes still but i make sure not to get on those other things or i make sure our kids know too this is what mommy's working sure. on sure yeah that's um, probably the biggest thing is making sure our kids are aware like this is because they'll call us out really really fast yes um, they will if we're jumping into work or anything so which is kind of nice to have some accountability with our kids so when they catch you there you're like oh yeah <laughs> so that's number one shut off whatever way you need to from work yeah. um, and then figure out beforehand um, and this is going to show a little bit of my threeness probably in my enneagram and stuff like that but figure out what makes your home restful for you so i'm not saying you're going to get everything think of it almost in that way when you're leaving for a holiday or a vacation and you feel like you should clean the house before you leave because you don't want to come home to a dirty house or maybe that's just me um i suddenly am like oh we need to do this and this before we leave and go someplace because when we come home i just want to get right in to our house right. and not have to worry about that stuff think the same way when it comes to staycation because you don't want to be like, well, it's fine. I'll just, you know, sure. If you're here for two weeks, we're going to have to clean the house again in that time frame. But like make that that your space that you're going to be in with you yourself or your family or whatever it is relaxing. So whatever mm -hmm. that is, if it's getting some food ahead of time so you don't have to go to the grocery store a bunch of times, great. Yeah. If it's cleaning the house, so that's my thing. So it's organized and stuff like that. We always call it like the big clean before a staycation. Um, and that means for me, I feel like, ah, oh, like our house is clean. It feels like I can relax more, things mm -hmm. like that. Whatever those type of things are that for you make your space relaxing. Um, if it's like this, treat it the same way if you're a reader and you would normally, you know, download a bunch of stuff on your Kindle to read while you're on holiday or grab a pile of books, go do the same thing. Yeah. Do that and get ready for your holiday yeah. at home. Wouldn't you say, are there other things that you feel like are helpful for you before we get ready to take that time off? Yeah. I know mean, that I you're think, not going to finish everything in work. I think that's yeah, the Yeah, I thing think too. being okay that, yeah, you're not going to finish everything from work, which kind of goes back to the, you know, making sure that you're shutting things off. Um, I think I think for me, it's more uh, just setting that mindset. Like, okay, next week or, you know, we're off all the whole time. So, okay, if I do this and I do that, then you know, that's then it's done, like whether it's work related or not, or if we're cleaning or, um, I don't know. I kind of like, I kind of want to think that like we're moving into an Airbnb in a sense <laughs> for the week, way of putting it. you know, especially if we clean the house really well and we kind of get things organized for the next week that then we can kind of come into it and feel like it's kind of like an Airbnb in a sense, like, mm -hmm. um, but you know, sometimes that's harder than others like depending on like what is going on in your life and all that kind of stuff and how, how can you um you know shut certain things down and stuff like that um i also think too like any other like typical rhythms that you would have during the week and stuff like that um you might want to like postpone those well it depends you know? like i mean we still i still personally like to move my body and things well no like that. that's not what like, i'm saying like more like uh like if you've got regularly scheduled evening things or events that you have to do or like things like that that like i guess a lot of times things that we have to do in the evenings are a little bit more related to work so i guess that we would shut those down so again that's more of a work related thing but i just think 
you know, trying to kind of clear, clear your schedule in a sense, right? Like if you're going on a holiday, you would clear your schedule because you're not going to be around. Mm -hmm. So, um, so in some ways kind of do the same thing. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think the, um, just as you would, as if you were planning for a holiday and stuff, you would come up with some kind of budget and say like, we're Mm going to spend this much money. And the same goes for a staycation. Now we have done staycations where we've spent zero. So that is completely possible. We did that in the States. We've done that here. Um, well, I guess when I say zero, maybe yeah, we had gas, say. maybe we had gas money or here we had to pay for the tube. So maybe not completely zero, but very, very, where we did yeah. no eating out. We did everything that was yeah. free. Well, we started to pay for food in our house. Though. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. We were paying for the food in our house, but yeah. the, that kind of idea of like whatever the minimum base is. But then mm-hmm. we've also done it where, which we typically do a little bit more <clears> now, if we're doing a staycation in London, um, it will be like, okay, our budget is whatever, which means we can eat out a couple times with the kids or stop and get a treat, or we're going to pay to go to this museum or the special exhibit. Mm -hmm. We do have the advantage here that our museums are free. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of them. Most of them, at least to get into the main part. Sometimes the special stuff costs money and stuff like that. Um, So that is an idea. Um, Something to think about if you, I mean, and this was the way in the States too, there were certain museums that were in our city that you could pay for a year membership and then it was well worth it like especially if you have a family if we went twice in that year we paid for that you know right. um mm-hmm. and when our kids were little like we had like a zoo membership because we went there a lot mm-hmm. and things like that and so look ahead and think of that before you go ahead and just buy if there's tickets to something we do the same thing here there are certain places you pay to get in and things like that that and makes some, more sense to just some, buy yeah, the exactly membership. sometimes i'm like oh well if we go once Maybe it doesn't make sense, but I could see us going multiple times to this place or being able yeah. to hop in there or those kind of things. And so sometimes paying for a membership for something actually makes a lot of sense. Sometimes it doesn't because some of those are stupid expensive. True. <laughs> and they don't make sense unless you yeah. use them every week or something. But or if you really know this is really a one-time thing. Yeah, like exactly. It, it just makes more sense. Um, so that's something to think about if you're doing activities. And then and so figure out your budget. And then... Look at the activities that are going on in your area. And I know I'm seeing that from someplace that I can go onto an mag- online magazine that London has and I can look up what's on in the mm-hmm. week. Now, first of all, if you live in a city like we do, that can be super overwhelming, especially yeah. during breaks because places do plan a lot of stuff for kids for breaks, which is yeah. wonderful. But then I'm like, oh, we should do this and we should do this and we should do this. And, yeah. and we'll talk about our rhythm of our staycation in, in a minute. Um, but like... Sometimes it gets overwhelming. It could be overwhelming to choose things. And you want to do all the things, and then and it's you want not really a staycation. So, yeah, exactly. So you still want to be relaxing. Like, think of that rhythm of when you're on a holiday, and it's like you go and do something, and then you come back and you swim. Or you're on a beach, but, like, it's swimming and relaxing and reading and stuff yeah. like that. Like, so figure yes. out a way to set, a, you know, rhythms. Now, I wouldn't use, like, uh, Disney... <laughs> As an example, or someplace like that where you're like on the go the whole time, I feel like, and doing something. But a well, lot of people. That's not a staycation. So. That's not a staycation. No, I know, but like I'm relating to like another holiday if you're on a beach oh, holiday yeah, or yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, figure out what there is going on. I re- remember in the States, there would often be actually lots of things. And sometimes oh, yeah. it takes looking ahead of time, too, because there was sometimes free stuff that you had to sign up for. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like there was this park that was near us that had you could go in the creek and like catch fish and frogs and stuff like that. And it was free, but it always got full pretty fast. Um, so if I waited mm-hmm. until the day before our staycation, then it was already full. And so yeah, look, you know, months in advance to figure out some of those things that you may need to book ahead of time, possibly mm-hmm. not always, but sometimes you need to. Um, so yeah, coming out and then think about like, do you, if you don't eat tip out typically, like a staycation is a really fun time to like take your kids out to eat. We generally mm-hmm. will do that with a staycation or, um, we'll make things at home that maybe would take longer and we normally wouldn't make, or, um, we'll try like we made homemade sushi over mm-hmm. our Christmas break, um, trying to figure out how to make it where normally on a weeknight, like I'm not going to take the time to do all that right. and figure it yeah, out yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, but that was really like all of us enjoyed doing. Yeah, that. I think I think uh, yeah, in that time, especially with food related wise, yeah, we would probably maybe budget a little bit more to maybe go out to eat or you know, like you said, treats and stuff. But also, I think in, even in that budget for food, like we would get things at home that we typically wouldn't get and yeah. bring in the home, like mm-hmm. you know. I don't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Like an ice lolly. Yeah. Like, sorry, a, uh, oh my gosh, thank you. I totally blanked on what it was called. (laughs) Popsicle, you know, like (laughs) random things that you typically wouldn't want to have in the house because it would just like 
make you want to eat those instead yeah. of like or at least we don't keep it in our house some people may be um, better than we are <laughs> so you know like bringing more like fun things in the house i would say fun things but. yeah exactly um so and then this is going this will be for some people and others not then you want to set your rhythms it's kind of like the final thing of figuring out how mm-hmm. to enjoy your staycation oh i should have said on the activities and stuff before we get into the rhythms mm-hmm. um ask your kids what they want to do because you'll well, be, if you have kids, if you have kids, yeah, if you have kids, yeah. include your kids. Of course, this is a you know when they're super young, they're not, not going to maybe say much, but um, often our kids will be like, oh, we haven't been to this place in a long time, or we haven't been to this park, or that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, I will say the majority of our time, our kids will jokingly say, let's we'll play, let's we can play video games every day, and we're like, no. Well, they literally a lot of times. <laughs> I don't know what we've done to our kids, but. They just want to stay in their BJs and stay home all day long. Yes. So we do. So that's part of our rhythm. So we do. We're like, okay, great. We'll make sure we do that for a day Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of thing. And so we do get their input. Um, Sometimes they surprise us. And I think they were the ones that were like, can we try and make sushi at home and stuff like that? And we're like, sure. Or sometimes it's that we haven't made some food in a long time. I usually make make homemade waffles. Yeah. Usually you make homemade waffles. I mean, so there's just some different things that they will ask for that we're like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, Veda recently, um, she's been super and she is super into history and there's a place that we go all the time i thought oh i don't want we almost do it every break i thought i don't want to go there again she's like can we go to this hampton court palace because i'm studying the tours and i want to do the audio tour and i've never done it before and we're like sure so you know and then each kid kind of had their thing that they wanted to do we might go see movies like different Mm -hmm. things like that um so then on the rhythm side of it what i Mm -hmm. do And what is helpful for our family, um, because we have one child that has a little bit of anxiety. Well, he has anxiety now a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so it's helpful for him to kind of, to know ahead of time. We always say we're being flexible. Yeah. This is kind of, this is the schedule. This is what we're hoping for is what we, the phrase we use. Um, and so that means that I look at the week and it may be that we're going to go do this activity on this day and we might be gone for most of the day. So the next day may be a, let's stay home in PJs kind of thing Mm -hmm. um for our kids too um when it comes to technology we make sure during our staycations that there are days that there's no technology i say that we might still watch a family movie we treat it like a sabbath day Mm -hmm. i'm like one of our rest days where we may still watch a family movie or some cartoons in the morning but like there's no games there's no youtube or things like that um and it's more like when you know we've done board game tournaments well that means no technology for us exactly that means us off of our phones and things Mm -hmm. like that um So we may do like a board game tournament or we'll bake or we'll go on walks and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But then other days we may, you know, do an activity and then we often won't tell the kids we're going out to eat. We'll surprise them with that, Mm -hmm. um, which they always love. Or there's a donut shop that we all love that we rarely get donuts. And I'm like, oh, let's we'll walk by. I'm like, oh, by the way, go pick a donut out. They're like, what? And they get so excited or bubble tea is the other thing they always want to get and that kind of thing. So we often will say we're going to this place and then we know something's around there to treat them to Mm -hmm. treat or something like that. And those are not, you know, sometimes if you are on a tight budget and you can't eat because I mean, let's face it, it's expensive to eat a full meal out as a family. Yeah. Well, Um, yeah. For us, a family of five, a family of five who has, you know, a teenager who eats as an adult and one that's pretty close to that. Yeah. Um, and so it can be expensive. And so sometimes instead of eating a full meal out, we will do little treats like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so pick those days, pick days that you maybe just want to stay at home and then think about what you would do at home. Like if you're going to say to your kids, sure, you know, and we do this, let's stay in our PJs today. We don't need to leave the house. That's fine. Um, and you guys can have this amount of hours or whatever of gaming time. But then after that, like it's you, and when we do say this kids, you got to play on your own, yeah. that kind of thing. And grab you know, a book, do whatever, grab yeah. a book. And that's often like, we'll all be on the sofa and people will be reading a book or someone's drawing or those kinds of things. Those are some of the things that we've set. And I know that's hard, um, depending what ages your kids are, but oh, we've, yeah, um, sure. that should be something we talk about sometime is like, we've always had a rhythm of like alone playtime like uh we called it independent else. Time. independent thank Indem- you that's independent, play. independent play independent yeah, play yeah. um of like this is and and so they've gotten used to that rhythm and still at this age you know they might go and play his drums or um i mean sometimes they do something together and they're all doing lego together and mm-hmm. it is hard when you have kids at different ages um and and that's something with yeah. rhythms and with picking things to do is we try to do something that um 
that everyone during the week has something that they enjoy. Yeah. That's but it true. means that they are willingly and not complaining to partaking in something else. And so, you know, when we went to Hampton Court, it meant the boys wanted to do certain things. Um, and they were a little annoyed after a while of how long it was taking Veda to go through stuff because she was doing the audio tour. And I was like, just go ahead and we'll meet you like at mm-hmm. another place and that kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, we went to see a movie that was more probably, um, and this, this is harder sometimes when it comes to things like movies, um, you know, Veda's seven and mm-hmm. Zane's 15. So it may be that you, that one of us takes the older ones to a movie. Right. Um, and, or Zane can only see that movie and Jude can't even see that one mm-hmm. yet, depending on what we've decided. Um, or, you know, the boys don't want to go see a My Little Pony movie. Right. <laughs> I remember doing yeah. that over one yeah. vacation. And that, so you sometimes well, th- will divide and conquer as yeah. parents. I think too, I think thinking about like, uh, those are like our staycations too are sometimes when we do like individual dates with our yeah. kids, you know? And so like that type of thing is like perfect. So like whether, you know, it's like Zane and I are going on a date one of those days during the week or a week, two weeks or whatever our break is, um, that, you know, that's a time that you just, you spend about three or four hours with that child, like just you two. Um, and that, those are really special times as well, um, to kind of help break up the staycation a little bit um and they the kids always look forward to those they absolutely look forward to those so and again those can be part of the rhythm yeah those can be simple things i mean Mm -hmm. you know um, yeah like like zane for instance he just wanted to go have american food and i was like okay well what do you want he said he wanted chipotle because there's some of those in london here and so we went went and got chipotle he just wanted to sit someplace and talk and eat it and then walk mm-hmm. around and that kind of thing. Um, and it was like a really pleasant afternoon and stuff. And so, I mean, yes, we sent the money on Chipotle, which was much more expensive than I remember it being, but, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So there are simple things you can do. Yeah. It is a perfect time if one of you is able to do something with the other kids and then that kind of thing. And then yeah. just going to parks. If you have yeah. parks around you, I know when we lived, you know, again, I'm saying that we live in London and there's lots of parks to go to. And when I say park, I don't just mean, Yes, it's great if we can find a park that has a playground for our younger ones. Um, Zane really doesn't partake in that anymore. I mean, sometimes yes he does, no, depending on his mood. Exactly, <laughs> depending on his mood. Um, but you know, I, I I would encourage you um, if this is not a thing where you live, but we have embraced it since being here. Is like going on a picnic. I think in the states, I used to at least in the suburbs, we did it every once. We in did a while. it every once in a while, but it really is nice. Um, If you can find a place to, you know, go on a hike and bring stuff to have some lunch and just sit as parents, if you need a bit of a break and then the kids can run around, like, we'll, you know, there's one park we'll often have a picnic spot that it's right, like, there's tons of grass area, but then it's right on the edge of the woods and the kids will just go run in the woods and climb Mm -hmm. trees and... Yeah, well, the woods are a part of the park, so it's not like they're running into somewhere else. No, Um, but we're then able to, like, sit with a book and read a book Mm -hmm. while they're playing and that kind of thing. I mean, obviously, we're keeping an eye on them, but... Yeah, yeah. um, So think outside of the box a little bit on some things, maybe, that you haven't done before. If it's gross outside, have a picnic on the floor. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. Like, do some things that maybe are a bit out of the abnormal. Um, But I think it's important to set rhythms that it's not you're on the go all the time, that you're also having... Having that time of relaxing. So if we have a day. That's a big thing for me at least. Yes, yes. Um, Well, and our son Jude, he's like, oh, we were just out yesterday. I don't want to go out again Mm -hmm. today. So it is tends to be if it's a week, it'll be like every other day we're doing something out. And if we're in one day, it may be, yes, we're going to leave to go on a walk sure. or something like that. Like we're not going to stay in the house the whole day. I guess there have been a couple of times when it's been like chucking down rain yeah. that we've been like, forget it. We're not going out and doing anything. Well, yeah. um, so I think it's just setting a rhythm. Again, think of what you would do if you were on a vacation and how you would like have rhythms of like, let's go see this thing and stuff like that. Um, and then let's relax. And, and sit then the, the next beach. day you sit at the pool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. think of those things and then create that kind of thing at, at home. home. Yeah. Um, and then if you feel like you, you know, sometimes we grab a couple extra things for our kids to do. Mm. Um, maybe, you know, I don't know, get like some new paint or, or whatever your kids are into. Yeah. Um, sometimes we'll get them some new things and then kind of 
It's almost like when, or at least I do this. Am I cheesy? I do this. Whenever we go on a plane anywhere and they have their backpacks, I usually stick some new things in their backpacks. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, a book or a magazine or a new sketchbook or pencils or something mm-hmm. like that. Kind of the same idea. Yeah. Um, simple things that then when you have those times, you're like, hey, I, as the parent, am going to read a book. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you go play on yourself from by yourself? Remember, like there are yeah, these things. They got you those cool, like coloring book or yeah, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And if you're a single person, a staycation you can totally do too. We have tons of friends here who mm-hmm. do staycations, and they kind of plan like a lunch or a breakfast or something like that with somebody, and then they like go and relax or you know. So it's totally this is not just a family thing, but obviously we're speaking from experience, and we often get questions about how to do it with kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so I think, it, you know, um, obviously shutting down, shutting down work. work is 100%. Do whatever you need to do. If you need to throw stuff in a closet, do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then um, coming up with a budget yep. of whatever that means for you. I know it sounds weird to do a staycation and come up with a budget, but I mean, there have been times we haven't done that. I'm like, ooh, we spent a lot of money this yeah, week unintentionally, definitely. and I did not mean to do that. Yeah. Um, so coming up with a budget. Um, asking your kids what they want to do, like thinking of activities ahead of time that you want to do, but also having your kids, you'd be surprised some of the fun things they may come up with that you hadn't thought of. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just coming up with a rhythm for the week, like be flexible. It doesn't, I mean, sure. If you have a time, you have to be someplace to see a movie or something Yeah, that may not be flexible, but like be flexible of like, you know, oh, well, whatever, you know, we don't have to go to that park today if you guys are feeling something else and things like that. Um, I guess, you know, to be honest, like you're going to be, you're going to know, you know, your family better than anyone, right? And so you're going to, you know, you guys are going to understand what is restful in your family. Um, And so however you want to do that, set up those rhythms for the week um, while you're at home um, Mm -hmm. and what can create that type of environment for you on on a staycation or a stay holiday yeah and i do think putting in some of those little surprises for your kids and not Mm -hmm. telling them everything that you're doing or like i said if you want to get them you know kids thought it was the cool it was warm one day we're like let's just stop and get ice cream and they're like what because we don't normally (laughs) right that wouldn't (laughs) Uh, be a typical wouldn't be a typical thing but again if we were on holiday someplace i would have done the same thing and so think Mm -hmm. in that kind of mode of like again Mm -hmm. within your budget and that kind of thing what are some little for yourself too what are some little treats Mm -hmm. you know one morning i will say we have the advantage we have a teenager one morning we're like let's go to the coffee shop around the corner and grab a croissant they were out of the kind i wanted but that's okay um <laughs> and you know the two of us went on a little walk without the kids and things like that that is totally if you have people you know kids that are age appropriate to be able mm-hmm. to watch the other ones but that's the idea so we hope this gives you some ideas on um how to think about a staycation and like it is uh, you know sure would i have liked this past holiday like easter break to have gone to italy or something 100 percent, yes mm-hmm. however i stayed off social media to make sure i didn't see what other people were doing um and we had a wonderful time here like we did end i ended the holiday and we had a really hard time coming back into work because we were relaxed it did mm-hmm. feel like we were on a holiday and so yeah. don't negate the fact that a staycation can very much feel like a holiday even though you're in your home and in your home area and city or town or whatever it is, um, you still can feel relaxed and come out of it refreshed and everything. So we'd love to hear from you guys on some of your ideas of things that you have done on your staycation or your stay. Stay with, holiday. A stay holiday. Is stay that what holiday. You? I don't know. <laughs> stay holiday. Stay holiday. Um, and we also would so appreciate it. If you would rate and review um, this podcast because it helps other people find it um, and helps them on some tips with the staycation too. So we will talk to you soon and um, take care. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of the Laurent Collective Podcast. If you enjoyed today's podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave a review, which helps others find our podcast. Continue the conversation with us over on Instagram at Laurent Collective. We look forward to going deeper than just surface talk with you again next week.